peace to the world, peace to the world. Now I know why you want to sail on that side. Why? Because you can see the reflection of yourself in the John Lennon. You're ridiculous. Get out of here. So the garden update, we're going to like add it later. Don't it's give it day. away. All right, well, you're the one who's asking. Listen, we loved this format so much last time. We had so much fun. We decided to do it again this week. Also, we were going to go outside today and vlog. The winds for the last three or four days have been so crazy. Shocking. Have you been sleeping okay? I always sleep fine. You're the only one that has trouble sleeping in this house. It's so loud outside at night. The wind? Yeah, it's like when Dorothy's about to get taken out <laughs> by the tornado. I was doing that yesterday with Crow. Today on the Matt and Blue Show, let's get straight to it with our call to action. Like and Share, subscribe. So we asked you guys last week if it like really was effective at all to ask you to like, share, subscribe and all that. And it turns out all of you said that it actually is very useful because it's a reminder. I appreciated that. It made me feel a little less cheesy. It made me feel a little bad that like, made me feel a little less bad that Crow was making fun of us indirectly. You're like the, don't tell me what to do and then you'll not do it because someone don't told you to do it. Tell me what to do. Do, don't. Can tell, tell me, me what, what to, to do. 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 All right, Robin. All right, Blue. What's up on your show notes? Pop it. Pop Let's get. Pop it. <laughs> How do they do the booty pop? Booty pop. No, it's a lick. Uh, it's it's, you can't really do it without music. We always miss the uh, start of the Pride Month. I don't know. We just kind of miss the bullet when it comes to Pride Month and. Miss the boat. Is that Miss the boat. That's, that's what I'm looking going. for. You're Thank right. you. I haven't been sleeping, y'all. So Matt was giving me a pep talk earlier when I was eating my really salty. I was tuna. like, "What do you need? Do you need me to go get you a Red Bull? Do you need a? Do you need a strawberita?" And we always do something for Pride, but we always we miss the boat when it comes we to making the, the video. Woo! Pride month finally, and hopefully we're gonna be on top of the ball this time. I didn't produce like a fun Pride video this year. No, we did when we lived in Denver. We went to Denver Pride, but I think since then, <gasps> because That's when it, Crow's bike was stolen, or not bike was stolen. Yeah, but let's remember it as like that was Crow's first oh, Pride. Yes. It was first Pride <laughs> when his bike got stolen. When we moved out of the cities, that like and moved into rural America, that we just like we became so detached. Am I actually recording right now? Oh my gosh, you better be. Who are you, this guy? <sighs> I'm off today. All right, can we get back on yes, topic? Yes, stay on topic. All right. I know we're already rambling about nothing about Pride Month. So the point is, Pride Month is coming up next month. We wanted to like remember some of our favorite uh, Pride memories. It has to be one memory. It was a pretty special moment when we were in Denver to join Pride or to be a part of it as a family. We're gonna go back. My very first Pride was in San Diego and I saw Cindy Lauper. And I had always like known who Cindy Lauper was and like thought she was cool, but like, after seeing her perform and live and at Pride, it was like such a visceral, cool experience. And I became like a forever fan of Cyndi Lauper. Did you know that girls just want to have fun as a cover? She didn't write that? Negative. My favorite Pride was Denver. All those years partying and like having fun and then being at a Pride where I got to share it with my son, not partying and just to appreciate how far we've come as a community. Pride to be something more than just like party, like exactly. about like having fun and getting wasted and it what became a thing something different. I don't know, what are some of your favorite memories about Pride? Fun to think back. I feel like we've come such a long way since our first Prides that like, I think Pride has taken on a whole new, I, mean, I mean like going to Pride is yeah. like there's, it's so much, it's so much more layered now because we've just come so far as a society. Happy almost Pride month. Moving on, recap. Why are you saying recap? What are we recapping? We're recapping the week. Jeez, it's the segment. But where? Oh, I see. But you said recap earlier, and we were not recapping. I know. Listen, I said I'm a little off today. I'm a little tired. All right. All right. So listen, I hope you guys aren't totally bored of my gardening uh, little bits on this channel because I'm enjoying it. I think Blue's getting a little bored of editing it, but oh, I'm I not editing it anymore. Remember, you are. Mm, I just had one video and then it then got deleted. Deleted it. <laughs> deleted it. <laughs> Garden update. I know I said that I was going to post a video about all my plants that I was starting from seed, but that's the video that I deleted. 
I was excited to kind of step up the gardening game this year and move on from just putting things in the ground since I didn't have to completely start from scratch. Like last year we had to build all the fences and clear this area out and bring in the skid steer. And so there was a lot more prep work last year. And so this year my big project was getting some raised garden beds built. They're each about 25 feet long, each one by four feet wide. I've got three of them. Two of them are 18 to 20 inches tall. And the other one is about half that. The wood that I used from these was actually from the deck that we tore apart last year. You guys might remember when we had that big deck outside of our house that had to come down. So we saved the wood and it was perfect wood for these garden beds. All right, I'm making some raised beds in the garden. I just I've been picking this right here. I'm doing this because there's a lot of weeds and grass growing into here. And this is gonna be a raised bed. And I don't really want all that stuff coming up through the bottom. Even though, honestly, I don't even know if it would, but look at how much grass is in here. Oh, I gotta get this out. At least break it up. And I'll put some good soil in here. Get out of there, grass. I'm using these blocks here that I got at Lowe's and First I was like, man, I don't know about these blocks. But then I realized the color of them, I don't know if you can actually tell right now, but they're kind of like a purplish with orange. They match almost perfectly our rocks that, are like, that go around our house. And, and I'm happy about them because they're movable. So since I'm sure I'll change things around or learn new things every year, every season, these will give me the ability to move the beds next year. So it won't be completely permanent. And next year, if I decide that the garden needs to be laid out different, I can easily do that. All right, not too bad. Alrighty, we went and picked up the soil so I can start filling her up. This part is the easy part. some of my little lettuce sprouts. I'm kind of devastated this morning. <sighs> I woke up this morning, came downstairs, and Blue told me that it froze last night. And I was so cocky about feeling confident that we were not gonna get another freeze. And I put all this stuff in the ground. We uh, made a trip to our local nursery this week to get some new starter plants. And my girl at the nursery, she said, did you guys, did you see the, the, the weather this week? It's supposed to freeze. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Cause I had looked at the temperatures. It said it was like in the like high thirties. So I thought, oh, we're good. It's not gonna freeze. It froze. My garden looks so sad this morning. <laughs> The grapevines especially, which were one of the biggest plants in the garden, and they were just beautiful, had big, beautiful leaves, and they are just so sad, and droopy, and frozen, and dead. I mean, I know they'll come back, but it's just sad that that happened. I lost, I think, a couple little tomato plants that I even had sort of like half protected. I had little okra plants that I'd started from seed. I think those are toast. All right, so it was kind of a sad morning. Rough start to the day, but that's okay. Because we still have a whole summer ahead of us. So that's all right. The garden is still going strong. I'm feeling good about it. So what's after garden? Oh, Blue's gonna take us to the farm. He's I don't even know where to, where to start with this. You got <laughs> I'm gonna offer up a disclaimer here. First of all, Blue did not want to tell this story or share this. So Blue's feeling really bad about this. But it is a reality of living on the farm sometimes. It, just, it gets a little sad. I was at my grandparents, we were sitting, having this nice, beautiful visit, and then all of a sudden my phone rings from Blue, and I'm like, why is he interrupting my visit? He knows what I'm doing right now. I'm like enjoying my grandparents. Oh my God, what are you, I can't, I just, I don't, all flustered. I'm like, yo, like, what's the problem? I'm like, what, what is going on? And then he proceeds to tell me, you might remember that one of our hens, Turner, she had a baby chick. We have all these young chickens that are now like, coming of age, you walk out to feed them and they swarm and jump and they're all over you. And like under your right? feet and everywhere. The baby chick got caught up in the madness and she got stepped on. Blue accidentally stepped on her. Little chick. 
Oh, so terrible. I should not be laughing. Like, I felt bad for Turner, too, because I just had taken her baby away from her. So. And she was such the protective mother. She would, like, puff up anytime you get near her. And... But the other thing is, like, she didn't even care. It was, like, once the chick was out of there, she was like, okay, feathers weren't puffy. And it was just like... She really did just go about, like, that, nothing ever nothing happened. Nothing ever happened. Here's the other little thing about that little chick. It had what's called scissor beak. So oh, yeah. it's like, beak doesn't... Close. It's like this. Like this. Yeah. So it already had this Ugh. little deformity that was like not likely that the chick would have lived anyway. Listen, it's life on the farm. Sometimes it's things life happen on the ranch farm. Now we're gonna take a minute to thank our sponsor this week, Solid Gold. Solid Gold was started in 1974 by Sissy McGill. Sissy came into a male-dominated industry and created America's first holistic pet food. And Solid Gold's nutritional platform is inspired by their founding belief that high quality food is the best way to impact your pet's mind, body, and spirit. For over 45 years now, Solid Gold has revolutionized the holistic pet food category and they have recipes for all of our dog and cat's dietary needs. They have whole grain, grain free, dry food, wet food, supplements like sea meal, and 100% human grade bone broth for dogs. Where's the bone broth? Our cats love the bone broth too though. I know, but I think that Arliss ate all the bone broth. I don't have anything to- Arliss. Solid gold foods are different because they cleanse the digestive system with whole superfoods, balance with living probiotics, and fuel with omega-3 and 6 fatty acids, supporting gut health and nourishing your pet inside and out. I like to think about feeding our pets the same way as we feed ourselves. The healthier you eat, the healthier and better you feel. Same thing with the, with with good food for dogs and cats. I can tell you have something to say. <laughs> I just wasn't like, and we can see the difference. You treat your pets like you treat yourself. I love that we have dry food for them, and then we also I love being able to give them a nice little treat with some wet food. They love their Sunday treat, and also to feed them supplements that they love and really enjoy eating. Arliss would take down this whole jar. Be kind to your animals. Be kind to your pets. And right now, you can save 30% off select Solid Gold products by going to solidgoldpet.com slash matte and blue. That's solidgoldpet.com slash matte and blue for 30% off. No, come on, together. For 30% off select, select Solid Gold products. products. Thanks, Solid Gold. You guys go check Back them out. Back to the weekly recap. We've also been binging I guess it's not even binging. It's not really we've binging. not been able to binge, but we've been watching. Well, because it's like here's the thing. Typically, we do when we See, watch. I can this, never finish a sentence. We do binge, but we do binge. Lately, do we've binge. been like taking a new approach to shows, watching shows where the season is airing currently, as opposed to like going like finding a show that is in its fourth season and going back and just binging all the way to season four. Now we've been watching shows kind of like we have shows that are just now premiering, new seasons of old shows that we had binged, and so we've like changed our viewing habits. Now we've been watching like four different shows throughout the week. And I think it's kind of fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it because I feel like we're getting to take so much more in. It's of easier just like... not to binge when we do that. All right, let's get to the shows. What all are right. we watching? So first up, Handmaid's Tale. Oof. We have been waiting for season four for so long. Is it every show that you watch that people are making bad decisions? Is but that I, a formula? Well, it kind of is because every well every story, or usually, every story is about your your protagonist that's like dealing with some sort of conflict or drama. I think it is very much like there is the external drama, mm -hmm. but there's also like the internal conflict. And that's like a very, that is a trend now is like the, the flawed protagonist. That is for, I think ever since like uh, cable networks became so big, like the flawed and tough protagonist mm -hmm. has been like, anyway. Oh, what are your thoughts on him, so First time you made me watch it, like season one. With first, no, I'm like, talking about the new season. I'm sorry, I won't cut you off. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Finish your story. I'm riding a very low wave right now. Could you just let me... There's on so it? many people in the comments are like, geez, that is blue when we get a word in. <laughs> I like sometimes like when I get a little mouthy and people are like, ah, blue is so bossy. Blue is so... <laughs> you guys have no idea. Well, listen, when you first started making me watch that show okay. years ago, whenever it was, I watched the first episode, I was like, wah, snooze, like, what is this? I didn't get it. Oh, then I watched it again, and then I just became obsessed with it after the second episode. I think that it's, there's so many parallels to, like, what is going on in our world today as far as, you know, 
treatment of people. I sometimes feel like this could happen. Makes me paranoid, and I love it. Do you have anything you, you have to say? <laughs> Trying to know hard to give a These bitches. You always are that way, though, when we start a new show. You always are like, meh, for the first at least three That's episodes. not true at all. Hacks? Hacks from you. the first moment we turned it on, actually, we, you were sucked in. We were both sucked in. Well, I love Are you guys anyways. watching Hacks? It is so funny. <laughs> the new episodes but are on Thursday on HBO Max. Hacks that, is so that, funny. There's one exchange that we rewound a couple times to watch again because <laughs> I was dying. The whole Liberace part. If you guys aren't watching that, you have to go watch it. Mayor of Easttown. Which leads us to Mayor of Easttown. I located fun. Winslet and even Not as Aaron much as Peters, I love Kate Winslet. And I think the performances are spectacular. I mean, she has been my favorite since Titanic. But... You know what I just read the other day? What? Like Gwyneth Paltrow... In the holiday? Was Gwyneth Paltrow was initially tapped to play the role of Rose in Titanic. I can't imagine that at all. There is nobody better to have played that role than her. I mean, it's just like, it is what's such an iconic I mean, role. Gwyneth and she, like, she just is that role. I can't, it's yeah. like hard to imagine anybody else. And then lastly, a show we just started last night on Netflix. Halston, which is boring. Uh, it is not. What? How dare you? It is such actually. How dare you? I love it. First of all, though, it's there's a, show. a nice little steamy scene in it, though. And there's a scene. And it takes place in the '70s, and it's like Studio 54 era. We haven't got to that yet. That part yet, but and the it's Liza like, part was good. That Liza so good, and it's like fashion and look. It is like to me like one of the most nostalgic. It is a movie that I would have just died for in high school because I loved all those like Moulin Rouge, Studio Fifty Four, Boogie Nights. What's um, on? Jazz. Chicago. Yeah, that's that's so your style. I'm really excited about Halston, and Ewan McGregor is pretty great in it too. Now, what shows are you watching? There's so much show. There's always like there's always too much television. I don't understand how you're supposed to consume it all and get through it all because there's just so much. So you can send me love notes of goodbye. Believe in true love that's frozen. Video, we're gonna take a little look back. Blue just pulled it up and realized that it was the 10 year anniversary of his runway video. It was your song, but it was the first like thing that we really created and made together was a video for this song. You hit up your friend Eli Green, you directed the video. I hit up my friend Natalia Ricci to be another character in the video. We shot it in two locations in our house that we were living in at the time and at the beach and what beach were we in it was fun because it was the first time we had created something together maybe it was like the seed or like what started this all before we <laughs> a little bit more abstract the video and i thought along but what was the significance behind the broken aches in the video everything in my world crashed anything that i had was broken but there were some interesting comments when he initially shared the video or not even just and when he initially shared it but over the years listen i know that we should focus on the positive things and there are a lot of really beautiful and nice comments but we're going to take a second to uh to, you know react to some of the other not not nice but interesting comments because there was a theme throughout uh, a handful of comments so this comment here why can't you be honest and sing to this uh, sing this to a man everyone knows you're married to Matt Dallas and even have a child you could have sang this beautiful song to him and be honest this would have done a great deal to combat homophobia in today's America love the song but I won't support it by it from iTunes simply because you are unnecessarily cowardly yeah <laughs> Yeah. We did this song ten years ten years ago. We were obviously in a very different place ten years ago. I don't were we even I don't even think I was out public I think in 2013, it was 2013 when I came out. But that, I wasn't not out. It had nothing That's to do true. with me not being out. But it is, but even going back to Halston and or Ryan Murphy because in the movie Prom, I don't know, we're kind of rambling and kind of digressing, but not really, because people were up so like worked <laughs> up. Kind of, but not really. <laughs> because James Corden was playing a gay role and in the movie Prom. But Ryan Murphy was like, yo, I cast who I feel is right to play that role. And even you look at Halston now, and Ewan McGregor is not a gay actor. At least he's not. Yeah. Um, and he's playing a like, very openly gay person. But we've come to this point now where we, like, we want everybody to be exactly like... Well, here's what I think about that. I think that's fine. And I don't have a problem with that. But Same. I think it also it has to be an even amount where, where a gay actor... Matt Dallas or who else is gay? 
Neil Patrick Harris, who else is gay? Like all the out and proud actors play straight roles that's, and are given those jobs. Like it's got to be an even, like you can't just hire. And I think that's the issue that, is that the I issue. take. That is the issue because, yeah. But I don't necessarily have a problem with, you know, one or the other. I just have a problem when it's only one. You're right. And like, we do see a lot of like straight actors getting to play gay roles, but we don't, we, it's very, very rare that we get to see a gay actor play a straight role. Anyway, the point is we were just telling the story and there's a few of the comments. I'm not going to go through any more really. That was just the most yeah. harsh one. So but there are there, few, Brett. Tough. But there are a few comments talking about like, why is he not singing to a man and why, whatever. I did play straight for a long time. And at the time that we made this, I was still not out. And can you believe that I put up? <laughs> with that I know that was like that was very as much as long as you come home to me at night baby it's okay <laughs> listen it was a different time we, well, listen, even if it were today we would still it is our project and we are allowed to tell the story we want absolutely I shouldn't even I don't know because oh this is such a tricky subject I played straight in my early years of not feeling like I had a, a, that support group around me I played straight. It's a reason why I'm so out and vocal today because I don't want anyone to ever have to do that. But I want to acknowledge that I get where they're coming from. They want more visual representation. It's a fun, beautiful song and a fun video that we created together, the first thing we created together. And it's fun that it's been 10 years. We are going to share it next month on the actual, actual 10 year anniversary. We want to take one second to uh, talk about our Peace to the World Ooh. posters. Sorry. These beautiful things that were done in collaboration with Hat Show Print out of Nashville, Tennessee. Authentic, genuine letter pressing. Um, so every poster is individually done and is completely unique to itself. And it's done on super beautiful paper. And. Um, Hashtag LSS. Like, share, subscribe, and um, that's it. We love you guys. Peace to the world. Peace to the royal. I'm not gonna tell you to brush your teeth this week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>